G'day folks, uh, just a little rambly update for your um, Friday afternoon. I uh, just got in from work and a little bit of work, I did finish earlier but yeah we barely have room to move at the moment so it's just one of those times of the year plus the money helps and paying off the RAV4, almost done. So yeah then I'll be able to spend another almost $700 putting another 12 months rego on the Micra which is always fun and uh, then work on the RAV4 so yeah at least I'll be able to say I can sell the Micro with 12 months wet rego on it instead of only a few um, that's not a bad thing so I've got to get that one back uh, Dad's been driving it around and I think it's at my neighbour's place next door so I'm going over there for a barbecue tonight so I'll recover it then so um, yeah I want to put the radiator and hoses on that clean it up spruce it up nicely and uh, Oh, I've got to find that centre rear engine mount, so that's going to be fun. Can't find it at Repco, I haven't found one online, and it's probably more than likely required for the roadworthy, so that's the tricky bit. But anyway, um, what else has been happening? Lots of work, lots of rubbish to get rid of. In case you're wondering about disposal of rubbish, we get a variety of different options here. Uh, these are only available for rates payers, they're a voucher. And one, one voucher constitutes one level trailer load of general waste. And it also says, uh, oh, it's curbside collection, so no hazardous stuff. Um, no heavy stuff. Yeah, curbside collection or taking a uh, trailer load to the dump. It's all volume based, so if it's all foam and mattress filler and other junk, you pay for, pay a fortune to get rid of very little and that's sort of where a shredder is going to come in handy here which is this probably this winter's project at this rate um, there's a uh, idea of how to get rid of some more difficult stuff uh, they do charge you to get rid of refrigerators televisions tires and mattresses uh, money wise or you can forfeit one of these vouchers that could also be used for a fully packed trail a load of shredded or broken up material which is what I've been doing uh, one level six by six foot by four foot trailer full of junk kept tightly packed is actually quite a lot of stuff so that's a lot of voucher to forfeit for one tire or one TV so that's why a lot of that stuff ends up getting dumped on the side of the road in the back streets because it's like $18 per tire or $10 a television 30 something dollars a mattress I don't know what fridges cost because I didn't know they even charged for them until now. Um, my local scrapyard takes them, they just flatten them and dump them in the bin. There's no such thing as refrigerant recovery or anything when it goes through One Steel or any of those places. You don't mess with the big companies, that's what they told the EPA, just fuck off and don't bother us because we're staying in the country, otherwise we'll just ship it all overseas whole. It's pretty much what they said, just bugger off, leave us alone, don't mess with the big business. Um, the, the tips obviously put them aside. Last time I was there they had a nice big pile of air conditioners but they weren't able to release any. Otherwise I would have uh, picked them all up for myself. Bought them as steel scrap and stripped them down. But yeah, that's uh, what I've got to do this week. Empty the steel off the trailer, the old day where firewall and fill it up with more rubbish. Because I've still got a bit down the back of the, the um, shed and I can pay about $2 each to get rid of tyres at my local tyre repair shop. So that's a much better option than taking them to the dump. Um, yeah, so what else? I hear North Korea is having a bit of fun. Well, they're going to be in for a fun time when people start dropping JDAMs and bunker busters on them. Why would you threaten the US with nuclear weapons? Really? <laughs> How stupid do they think we are? Well, I'm not American, but at least I know our NATO forces and UN forces are equipped with some of the most state-of-the-art anti-missile defence systems and North Korea so far hasn't been able to launch many successful missiles they blow up after launch or they end up in the sea that sort of thing so I think they're a bit premature with launching their missile well at least one with a warhead on it assuming that's what they're doing so yeah I'm betting my money is on an anti-missile defence system tears it to shreds before it goes anywhere or it just ditches in the sea on its own accord and then the bunker busters start falling on North Korea <laughs> that's pretty much it hell if any of my uh, subscribers are in the for in the forces watching this stationed off uh, North Korea um, don't forget to write Aussie 50 on one of the um, bunker busters or something a JDAM 
That'd be pretty cool. Hell, do a Kickstarter. Build a J-Dam through Kickstarter. <laughs> we were thinking out loud about that at work with a friend and that'd be kind of cool. Sponsor a Bunker Buster. That way you get update photos and video of its progress through the production line and finally a, a black, grainy black and white video of the nose camera just cruising towards a um, North Korean command bunker. Kind of funny. Well, people would die but I don't know, it's war. It's like the footage they, they sell on CNN which is essentially it. You put advertisements on uh, war footage for CNN, you're basically cashing in on warfare, so... What about non-profit warfare um, productions and things? I do like History Channel docos though, proper uh, information documentaries. I just hate watching news. I really do. I listen to it on radio today and every day at work, but I hate... I haven't had an antenna on my TV in a long time. My TV is just a display monitor. So yeah, I've got bits for Daewoo parts. Uh, ironically, he's got friends in South Korea. I think he's been to South Korea. He's living in New York at the moment, so that's a bit safer. That's where I got my New York plates from. But yeah, his uh, Laganza got flooded through Hurricane Katrina, and uh, well, not Katrina, um, Sandy. Katrina was a while ago, but yeah, Hurricane Sandy kind of made a mess. And since that car's a a bit rare over there, and b um, has sentimental value. Um, I think it was local music personalities and things. He was working in the music biz or something for a while and basically it's got like 150 signatures of prominent local music um, gurus and DJs and things on the headliner. So uh, it's sort of a semi-important car. I mean, a lot of people don't consider Daewoo's to be particularly good, but this one's obviously worth saving. And that's sort of the point. It's a labour of love thing. I'll scrap the Daewoo because I have no love for him and no one else around here does, so... It ended up, the Lanos that is, I scrapped the Lanos because of that reason, but if I actually loved that car, I would have fixed it up and put it on the road no matter what it cost. I mean, the RAV4 that I got cost two and a half, which is actually quite cheap for one of those, especially the Cruiser model, Cabriolet model. And yeah, if I have to spend another two or three grand getting it back on the road, which I doubt, um, it's still, regardless, even if I have to spend about four grand over a period of 12 months, I don't mind. Because, well, well, I'm terrible at saving up money, so I wasn't going to save up and buy another one that was already on the road. Um, yeah, you know how it goes. You find a project and you just fall in love with it. A uh, mate of mine in um, the UK did up a Fiat Panda. Again, a lot of people hate Fiats and reckon they're a piece of garbage, but this guy loves his Fiat Panda and it looks like a tough little 4x4 that would uh, survive a North Korean nuclear fallout blast and keep going. So, why not? I mean, it's what you love. It's a utilitarian dream car. It's not a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or anything like that. But, who really wants a Lamborghini, really? I don't think I could... I, I couldn't see myself ever driving one. It'd be fun for a while, but really... I'd rather hire one for a day or something. That's about it. Definitely wouldn't own one. Wouldn't own one. Wouldn't own a Ferrari. Um... Porsches wouldn't be too bad because they're a bit more common and they're more of a driver, daily driver's car. Get a Porsche Boxster or something, the proper rear engine one. But apart from that, nah. You stick with basic things around here. <laughs> As you can see, it's nice and tidy. Flame spin. <laughs> That's next. Well, when the weather gets really cold and wet anyway. I was just dragging it out to see what condition the motor was in. So anyway, hope you'll uh, have fun and uh, thanks for watching.